Okay, uh, moving on to how to improve your memory and in particular interest to uh, myself given that uh, I struggle on a daily basis. I wasn't surprised to learn that working memory is generally fairly poor. On average your working memory can only hold seven items, uh, maybe give or take one or two. It's a, not a lot given the modern times that we live in. The way you improve your memory is essentially through technique. Uh, it's all about technique. Memory champions are uh, all employ one or two or a variety of techniques to improve their memory and to achieve certain tasks so that, that's the it's, if that's the secret that's the secret it's all about technique the principle is pretty simple um, our human brains don't remember all things equally as well uh, our brains don't remember words and numbers as equally well as visual elements uh, and so to give you an example good uh, memory would be a visual image of a bike uh, and some other sensory information on that. A bad one would be the word bike. We, we don't do words and numbers very well. So the real principle here at play is to convert those words and numbers into things that we do remember well, which as we've just stated are visual images um, and including other senses. So we need to convert something that is essentially you know, boring uh, or hard to remember into something more memorable. Makes a lot of sense, right? So even unforgettable, Matt King Cole will tell you. So if, for instance, if you had a name like David Williams and you wanted to remember that, the way you do that is take it and convert it from something boring into interesting, convert the name into an image of, say, a statue of David and a Williams screwdriver. You know, voila, you have an image that will stay with you. The trick here is that I made it exaggerated. Uh, there's a large screwdriver. I made it lewd and rude. Uh, and the author says that he uses his grandmother in very compromising sexual positions to remember things because the brain loves that kind of rude crude sexuality to it and make it ugly and attractive so these are the things that you need to employ against items to make them kind of stand out and employ other senses as well so smell sound and sight the other a technique that's used within all of that is called the memory palace and, and this is really about uh, a technique used to remember lists of items and this is the one going back to Simondes where he, he kind of thought and reconstituted um, in his head what the image was of the banquet hall. It's a pretty simple process. If you need to remember a list of items um, you use a house or a location that you know intimately well. Whoops, sorry, that's a uh, house. I don't know why a house is there. I'm talking about a house. There you are. You Google house, that's what you get. <laughs> All memory champions have a stack, a stockpile of, of memory palaces. So they're, they're, again, they're locations that you know intimately. They might be a childhood house, they might be a primary school, and you know them well, you learn them, and the brain remembers those spaces much better than others. So what you do is with this technique is you imagine your location, know it very well and intimately, walk through it, and then you place the items about the house that you need to remember. So in this instance, there's seven dwarves, a man creaking, kicking uh, ice. You place them around the house in the order that you need to remember them. Make them memorable, make them larger than life, make them crazy, make them screaming, and then you'll be able to recall those items, I guarantee it, in six, 12 months once you do that. An advanced competition technique is called the PAO technique or a person action object and it's used by nearly all memory champions. It's something that you probably won't use on a day-to-day -day basis but it's certainly used in competition. And what you do is you form an image to represent uh, any number between 0 and 0 and 9, 9. There's a lot of fixed cost here, you have to represent an image for that. But For instance, 37, you could represent that as David Beckham uh, kicking a soccer ball and you have one image for 37 and that's it. And you need an image for every number between 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 and 99. Once you have one of those images, you can construct, yeah, and this is a fixed cost to this uh, uh, technique, but once you have those images in place, you can build um, a set, an image that represents any six-digit number, i.e., so say, say 73 was Kate Moss snorting coke, apologies to the Moss family, 48 Elvis eating a pie. So if those were the images represented that, um, those uh, numbers, 377348, which is a six-digit number, would be represented by David Beckham snorting a meat pie. And there's one image, it's memorable, and, it, and you can use that to recall six digits. That's a technique, the PAO ex, um, memory technique. Now on to expertise. Expertise the author had a particular interest in. Um, I think really because of the journey and the nature of his journey, he was trying to become an expert in memory um, techniques and in particular competing in the Memory World Championships. In essence what he found was that expertise is really a lot about memory. It's pattern based retrieval and he found that experts did a lot of reacting not thinking. Uh, and the example he gave was one that was again very memorable so here it is, chicken bum inspectors. 
if you in order to determine the sex of a chicken you need to train for five seven years look at about 250,000 chicken bums and then you flip them upside down and you can tell within milliseconds whether they're male or female you have to look at you have to kind of process the thousands of different vent patterns but it's almost done without thinking again reacting and it's all about memory and and almost that subconscious implicit memories that you don't even know how you record it but that you just know and when they interview the chicken bum inspectors after they've looked at a bum and they've guessed correctly that it's male or a female I guess they do this because they've got to toss the males into a grinder because they're not going to be laying eggs for them it's a bad thought I know but this is why they make so much money these chicken bum inspectors and they've trained highly but they don't even know why they do how they're doing it they're just uh, reacting not thinking plateaus he mentioned makes a comment that uh, plateaus are, are bad you need to move away from them by employing certain techniques Bruce Liu didn't Bruce Lee didn't like plateaus, he thought you would rather die than to plateau. Techniques to get through plateaus uh, is to practice failing, push through unreasonable limits, always do that. But the key key point with uh, expertise is the art of deliberate practice. You must push and practice technique in practice. Do not just go down and shoot hoops for the sake of it. You practice your technique, do not go on autopilot. That is, a t that is the essential ingredient to becoming an expert. Work on technique and pushing your limits, the art of deliberate practice. This is what he found on the author's journey and thus here we are back at the author. He learnt that you could really apply your, uh, those principles and yes, he won the US Memory Championships after a year of training. Pretty amazing story, uh, a lot of dedication on his part, uh, but he, um, he, he learnt very, uh, a great deal obviously through that, that, that 12 months and in particular what you can do uh, when you set your mind to it and you apply certain principles in place. He still thinks that he loses his keys, um, so his memory is not terrific, but he has been tested for memory and scientifically it has improved. Uh, so he's, he's done that after the fact and they've proved that even his working memory and other elements of his memory are, are vastly improved. Um, he also learned that you know how important memory is, uh, and it's narrated throughout the book. It's almost the most human of things, and everything relies on memory, uh, from what he can ascertain. The other key point, which we've made just mention of in the expertise area, is the art of deliberate practice. Uh, to gain expertise is an essential ingredient in, in gaining any expertise and this deliberate practice he emphasizes constantly throughout the book and, and obviously feels that um, it's a primary factor to get uh, a particular skill set up to a level which uh, you, I guess you'd be classified as expert. The other comment he makes is how we perceive the world and how we act and are products of how and what we remember. So, you know, memory is the most human of all things. His very last word um, and you know, I think this is just coming down to the the journey he's been on and how much uh, he's learnt, how memory we rely on memory and what it means. But his comment at the very end of the book is that no lasting joke or insight or invention, etc., was ever produced by an external memory, i.e., hard drives, phones, or whatever. It's all done by the human brain. As the role of memory erodes at a faster pace than ever before, we need to cultivate our ability to remember our memories make us who we are that's his journey that was the book uh, Moonwalking with Einstein by Joshua Foyer uh, a hell of a read a really interesting one given the, the author's journey on that and becoming US Memory Championship go out read it you'll enjoy it